How's it going everyone? It's Alex with AC Flips. Today I'm going to talk to you about the exact process that I go through when looking at new leads. Some of you might have a hard time determining whether or not some lead is good enough to purchase and I'm going to walk you through the exact steps that I go through to determine if a lead is worth purchasing or not. Before we jump into the video, would love if you guys subscribe to the channel and I just launched a spreadsheet that helps you track your inventory spend and your goal setting for the future. So check that out, link in the description if that sounds interesting to you or would help your business. But let's jump onto the computer and check out a lead so I can walk you through my process. All right, so I'm just gonna pull up a random Nike listing here. We have some sweatpants that are really popular, especially going into the fall and winter time. But so I just picked the large size for now. I'm just gonna show you the exact steps that I look at when determining if this product is worth purchasing or not, starting with the rank. Normally, uh, I'm gonna first just glance at the sales rank. If it's anywhere below 200,000, it's worth looking into for me. If it's a little bit higher than that, then I will potentially look at the Jungle Scout or look at the sales estimator or even the Keep Offers tab to determine if it still actually sells a little bit versus you know something that sells virtually nothing. And you know if it's a 250K rank, certain categories will sell at 250K. Uh, some categories definitely will not. So, um, but if it's below 200K for the most part, uh, I'm probably going to look into it or at least move on to the next uh, criteria to determine if I would purchase this or not. You can also quickly, you know, real quick without even going way down to the Keepa chart, you can see that it's a six, currently 6K. We can just look at the last 30 or 90 days and we can just see, you know, is it way blown out of proportion? Because sometimes the snapshot of 6K is, uh, is, is a lot lower than what the average is. You'll see that on some slower moving listings if it's currently at you know 190k um, it might be in a down spike and you'll see that on slower moving charts where there's just really big spikes and maybe the average is like 300,000 but it's all the way down to 190 because it got one sale and it dropped the rank that much after one sale so uh, definitely look at the averages as well as the current uh, but we can see that they're pretty close to each other the 30 day and this uh, current so that moves us on to the next criteria which I like to look at the variations next so we're gonna scroll down to Keepa and we'll look at the variations tab. We just wanna make sure that the product we're looking at is one that actually sells as well because when there's a lot of different variations, some are, are gonna sell a lot faster than others and we just wanna make sure that we have one that is going to sell well and that is actually priced pretty well Could, because we might come across a couple different variations on the listing where they probably sell a decent amount of the same but one is priced $5 higher than the other. Like these, we have 8% of the variations compared to you know 9%, but this product is $9 more expensive than this one. So that gives us nine more dollars of margin. So you know that's just stuff we wanna make sure that we're looking at here. We have the black large, which is currently at $53. Uh, again, we're looking at the black large for this example, so I'm going to stick with that. Um, but again, if you wanted to source, you know, some of these other slow, little bit slower movers, but still have a good buy box price, that's what you can do as well. So we can see 57, uh, 59. Some of the grays seem to be at a little bit higher buy box price than the blacks, but but we can see that the black large still sells really well. It's the second fastest selling variation, so that's what we cared about uh, looking here. And then we want to determine, do these variations sell? Again, a quick reference on how to determine what variations actually sell or how, how much they sell in a month. Uh, we can scroll back up to SellerAmp and see that the overall listing, right? This is not the specific variation. This is the overall listing. So all variations combined sell around 3,000 times per month. So what we can do then is look at that ratings percentage. You can see that they've gotten 469 reviews, which is 12% of the total ratings on the entire listing. So uh, an easy rule of thumb is multiplying, you know, 0.12, that 12% by the 3000. And when you do the math there, it says that this listing sells around 360 times per month. To confirm how often this variation actually sells, like we said, it, the estimate is 360. We can look at the data offers tab and just kind of take a look at the sold 30 days. We want to include historical and we can just see uh, some of these sellers, how many they've actually sold in the last 30 days. So this seller says it sold 150. If we look, they had almost 150 in stock and it's slowly just gone all the way down to almost zero, which means that this seller has definitely sold 150. Uh, this seller has probably sold a decent amount as well. Some of these really tall spikes like this here, when it goes from one to 60 back down to one, that's actually a uh, error in the stock count just looking at an FC transfer. Sometimes stuff checks in and then it has to get uh, sent to other warehouses so it goes back down to no stock. Um, but it does count that in you know the calculation. So um, you know we don't wanna look at those numbers. We can see a couple other sellers ha have you know a steady gradual decline in their stock history, which shows that it is selling a decent amount. 
And if we were to keep, you know, at least 100 in stock at some point, we probably could sell 100 of them in a certain month. So um, this is definitely something we might go a little bit deeper on, depending on the price, uh, making sure we can actually stay profitable no matter what the price does. That moves us on to the next step is, which is looking at the chart metrics. So we can see on the Keepa chart here, the price is actually pretty steady. We have seen a little bit of a drop uh, since July, but again, it's a, it's a product that sells better in the fall and winter time. Uh, the offer count has definitely risen in the last you know month and a half, two months, uh, which definitely happens and the price drops because of that, which also happens really often on Nike listings. But we wanna make sure that at this $53 range, which we've kind of seen over the last month, it's pretty steady. Uh, and if we're profitable at that 53, then it might be a good purchase. We can also notice that the offer count is going down as of recently, which might mean that the buy box could creep back up a little bit higher. Again, we like to see a fairly steady buy box price. We like to see the sales rank fairly consistent, which we can see it's slowly going down, which again, this product sells better in the fall and we're moving into fall season. So this rank is only gonna continue to get better uh, the colder the weather gets, the more people want to buy joggers. So now we've evaluated most of the data. Everything is telling us that, you know, this should be a good purchase. Now let's see if we can actually find it profitably on certain websites. I like to do all of the analysis on the data first because uh, no matter what happens on certain websites, if we aren't finding a product that is worth purchasing based on, you know, the metrics of how quickly it sells or if the variation sells or not, we don't want to spend time searching Google, looking at a product that, right, we're looking at the variation that just never sells. So we want to make sure we have a good variation. We want to make sure we have an understanding of how much it's actually going to sell for us if we were to get the buy box. And then we can start looking for finding this profitably. And we know that it's a pretty steady price. Um, so even if we don't find it profitably, it's not an item just to write off. We can probably put it on a certain list and, and see if this is, would be a good purchase if we ever find this on sale in the near future. So let's open up Google here. We have that nice seller amp button there that brings us to Google, searches the title to see if we can find this profitably here. So one thing with Nike joggers, you gotta make sure you have the exact match here. So we can see this one's 100% cotton. It says sportswear club, jogger, sweatpant. Certain times you're dealing with fleece versus a jersey material. So we just wanna make sure uh, that this is a fleece lined one. So it's a little bit thicker. I'm assuming that we just want to make sure we're matching the the right material because that is going to avoid IP complaints or inauthenticity claims uh, because that can happen with Nike. So um, I think this is a jersey jogger here. We want to make sure that we have uh, the fleece jogger because it's looking like these are a lot of jersey. And because it's not in the title, maybe we want to add that in here and write fleece uh, because that might give us a little bit better search here. So we can see that uh, Snipes has it $45. Hibbit 42, they run sales often as well. Um, they actually run 20% off pretty often. So uh, that could be an option for you, like holding off on the $42 price point because it's a little high, uh, but waiting for that 20% off. Doesn't look like we're gonna see this uh, super profitably now, but sites like this will run sales, especially when we go into fall seasons and maybe they'll have you know, sales during Halloween, they'll have sales during Black Friday. Just things to keep in mind because we need to get this price point down to $26 and there's times where you know certain sites will run 30% off, 40% off. Well, if we take $42, all right, an average price point, and we get a 30% off, uh, now we're getting pretty close to that max cost or the cost where we're actually gonna have a 30% ROI, $3 profit. So uh, this is one of those products where we're not finding it profitably right now, but when certain sites will run sales, uh, then it's maybe something we wanna pull the trigger on. And one last thing to think about, uh, when searching for these products, if we were able to find it profitably. Another thing I like to consider is how easy was that to find? Was it the very first option here or did you have to scroll you know, all the way down and you even had to go to the second Google page, right? To even find this profitably. So um, if you're scrolling all the way down here and you're finding it on a site that is still legitimate but maybe not doesn't show up in the first search, then maybe it's a little less likely to have a ton of competition the second this thing goes on sale. Uh, because that could be an issue if we see the offer count shoot up. And one thing we can look at too is like, what happened last winter? Did this thing go on sale? Did the offer count go way up? And what happened to the price? So we can see that this thing was selling for around, you know, $70, $60, somewhere in that range. Uh, Must have went on sale at the end of September. And then the offer count went all the way from 10 up to 60. And then that price kind of dropped down to the mid 50s where it's kind of at right now. So. One good thing about looking at the past history here is we might be able to see prices closer to that 65 to 70 range 
if the offer count drops low and the demand is high. I mean, the, we can see the demand got all the way to 1500 sales rank, which sells really fast, a lot faster than it even does now. So all things considered, this product is not a purchase for right now, but it's definitely something to keep in mind because we know the seller rank is decreasing, which means the velocity is increasing on a product like this. And based on the Keepa chart, it looks like it could be a good buy if we can just find this profitably. So add this to the list. And actually one bonus tip is if you create Google spreadsheets, uh, we can actually export the data from this sheet to a certain one, maybe say seasonal or needs discount. Uh, those types of Google Sheets you can create to check periodically to see if you know we can actually find this profitably because maybe it's a good product, but we need an extra 10% uh, to get it profitably. And then you know, Dick's Sporting Goods maybe runs uh, or they discount at 15% and now we know it's on our list. We know exactly where to look and we can buy it profitably when it's 15% cheaper. So. Those are all the steps that I take to determine if a product is worth purchasing or not. So the more you walk through this process, the quicker you're going to be at sorting through leads and hopefully you get better and better at making these buying decisions. And really it's about efficiency and determining if a product is good or not as quick as you possibly can. You don't wanna spend 20 minutes on one product just to decide that it's not a good product. And then you have to do that over and over again and it's just really gonna slow down your sourcing time. So the more you practice this process, the better you're going to get at it, the quicker you will be able to source in the future. So if you guys found this video helpful, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.